hideous introduction, but welcome folks to episode 11. Okay, so today, you can tell I'm kind of going a little bit off the wall straight away. I wanted to introduce this video in as hectic a way as I possibly could to make a significant point. Now today I want to focus a little bit more on the playing side of things as episode 10, which some of you may have seen, focused heavily on this new guitar, which I'm still loving and I really, really appreciate all the support and the comments that I got from you with regard to this. So thank you everyone for your kind words. I'm still loving it and I'm just exploring now all the sonic um, options that this guitar has afforded me, which is fantastic. Today though I want to get back to playing a little bit and it's kind of not only playing, but also the influence that gear has on your playing. So I kind of talked a little bit about that in more of a fundamental sense last time. Where I was talking about how a great guitar can bring out the best in you, for example. And uh, I also want to talk, on, uh, talk about today how gear not only brings out the best in you, but also brings out something that's unexpected. So what I've actually done, I've just bought a new fuzz pedal, as you can probably tell. I bought the Fuzz Factory from Zvex, which I'm so pleased we've finally got them in stock at Peach Guitar. So if, you, if you're interested in wacky fuzz pedals that bring out some really cool elements of your playing that you maybe hadn't discovered before, I can't recommend the Fuzz Factory from Zvex highly enough. Um, and what it kind of got me thinking today was how important it is, I feel, to have some pieces of gear, and not everything, but some pieces of gear that do challenge you and do kind of encourage you to just do things you'd never do normally. Um, and you know, I've, I've stuck this pedal on my board today and it got me thinking that pretty much everything else I use, everything else that's on my board, all the guitars I use, all the amps I use, I, I'm very comfortable with those things and I'm very much, you know, I've fine tuned my, my kind of ideas of what I like in gear to suit my playing and, and that's what I think everybody does, you know, you, you hone in on these little uh, the nuances of guitar sounds that when you're just playing 99% of the time you just want a solid foundation to play with and of course that's natural and that's normal. But what it kind of uh, said to me was that, you know, I'm very, I'm very complacent with my gear so the easiest way to manipulate what you do and to encourage new sounds out of you really is with pedals, you know, and if you're not a pedal player, I can understand why that is, you know, if, you, if you're perfectly happy just exploring all the nuances that an instrument, a guitar, an amplifier setup have to offer you, then that's great. But I also really like the more experimental side of things when it comes to pedals, and I think a lot of us do, I think a lot of us are in that camp, so having a wacky fuzz pedal is not useful all the time. You know, I'm never going to use those sounds that I just showed you on a jazz gig or a country gig, for example. But if I just turn this pedal on one more time, what I love about it is the unpredictability. And that's a, that's a word that often gets used for fuzz pedals. And I think a lot of our favorite guitar players who use fuzz can often be quoted as saying that unpredictability is kind of a major factor in what they go for. This is just that times 10. So. <laughs>
Okay, so basically what I'm trying to say here is that maybe sometimes it's it's the right time to play it safe. And usually it is, but I do think there's a lot to be gained um, by just chucking in stuff sometimes that you never know what it's going to do. And I think the Fuzz Factory is going to be a mainstay on my board for a long time for exactly that reason, because I love the idea that I can turn it on, particularly when I'm just playing here by myself, and just get a whole new direction of ideas, because all the other pedals I know exactly what they're going to do every time I turn it on. You know, the OCD, for example, I know is always going to sound lovely. <laughs> Adding that fuzz adds something totally different and um, you know you can really I'm not one to encourage people to just make ridiculous sounds all the time but I do think there's some merit in just having some fun Yeah, I'm still learning that pedal, but I think the thing is, I'll never master it, and that's the joy. So, you know, if you take anything away from that little sonic uh, blast of whatever the hell that was, maybe push yourself a little bit, just sonically, to, to find some stuff that's outside of your comfort zone, uh, particularly fuzzes, but, you know, it applies to any other kind of effects, really, modulations, delays. There's a lot of fun to be had, and I think sometimes we, we play it too safe. So, um, you know, it's it's not for everybody, I'm sure, but as a general rule, why not try new things? And I think that's a really great combination, particularly with this guitar. Let me just, before I move on, I want to get some great feedbacky sounds out of this thing. Guitar playing is about having fun. There we go. Okay, so I want to wrap this up with a couple more uh, questions, which I haven't done for a little while. I've just talked at you a lot in previous episodes. So I want to answer a couple of questions that I've had. A few people have asked about um, if I have any sort of specific practice or warm-up routines. Um, so I want to kind of answer that as, uh, as broadly as I can by saying, practice-wise, I don't really do it because I just don't have the time, you know, when I'm playing at home, it's very rarely that I get to sit down for hours at a time. Obviously, I play a lot of guitar in the days when I'm working at the shop with Peach Guitars and stuff like that. So I do get to play, but practicing is never really part of my mentality of playing. It's just sitting down and, and doing something. Um, but warming up, I do think, is important. And it's something that I often forget to do, but when I try to remember to focus on warming up, I find I always tend to play better, whatever that occasion might be. So, there's a couple of little things I do. One thing is a little chromatic warm-up, and I've shamelessly stolen most of these things from other guitar players. I think I took this from Jim Root, and he does this thing. Let me take my, uh, turn my delay off. It's basically just a four-note little chromatic pattern up each string, sequentially and then back down again. So let me show you what it sounds like. And uh, of course, by the nature of video recording, I'm bound to mess this up, but it's just a little warm up idea. <laughs> highly unmusical but it works great to get your alternate picking up to scratch and to also use every finger on each string uh, 
independently. So here's what it sounds like sped up a bit. You know, it's pretty disgusting sounding, but even just without coming through an amp is how I tend to do it. I always find that's quite useful, just to really get your fingers in full flow. You can also do it um, a little bit slower, but just alternating one note per string. That's, that's kind of stuff I like to do, just to get single notes as clear and crisp as I can. Same thing going down. You know, just little stuff like that. It's very unmusical, you really don't want to do it through an amp because it will piss off anyone who's listening to it, but I do find it quite useful, even very slowly. That kind of stuff, but the, the four notes per string, I think is a good one, I use that a lot. I also have stolen something shamelessly, once again, from Tom Bukovac recently. He talked about this little, um, that is a more musical type of exercise, which is to play to try and encourage yourself to grab chord shapes as quickly as possible. Some of you may have seen this if you watch his videos. It basically sounds something like this. So it's just playing an E, F, G, A, B, C, D in order, but you try and get it as quickly and as accurately as possible. useful I think just to again to get those chord shapes and that's when it comes to rhythmic playing especially and just getting that groove happening it's quite a good one so thank you for that Tom um, let me think if there's anything else often just sort of jazzy lines as well to really work on intricate chord voicings <laughs> absolute crap but those kind of ideas are, are quite useful I think just to get your chordal knowledge up and kind of refreshed in the forefront of your mind it's particularly amusing to do that kind of thing if you're about to record a video on shredding or metal rhythm or something and you're just sitting there going <laughs> busting out some little Donna Lee lines and stuff like that. It's, but it is useful because it's all about warming up. As you can tell, I probably haven't warmed up enough today because I'm pretty sloppy, but hopefully that gives a little bit of insight into some warm-up ideas. There's so many things. Also, just trying to play as cleanly as possible. <laughs> deceptively simple but actually just trying to get notes really accurately in a kind of consistent time and just have them all sound full and rich is quite a challenge as well so there's all little tips there that I do think help as warm-ups but usually you don't want to play them through an amp because it is hideously unmusical and it will as I say upset anyone else who happens to be listening to it um, so hopefully that goes some way to answer your question about warming up anyway I evidently don't do it enough, but those are what I tend to do if I do it. I also had another question from Jeff Van Wy, which is an excellent name by the way. Uh, he said, hey Jack, the guitar sounds awesome. This was on the last video talking about this 
particular guitar, so thank you for that, Jeff. I was wondering about your guitar setups as far as action and relief. And um, I hate to say it, but I've actually historically been pretty uh, lax and pretty sort of unfazed about guitar setups, which I now realise is very detrimental because it is very important. And I've always just kind of thought, well, I'll just get on with it. Um, I tend not to work on my own guitars because I'm pretty haphazard with stuff like that. I'm not great with tools. But what's interesting is I always tend to go for um, a slightly heavier gauge of string and I like a, a higher action usually and a fair bit of relief in the neck. Um, but I'm sort of starting to appreciate the art of the opposite of that. I mean, I like those things because you can really lay into the guitar and you don't have to worry about it fretting out or buzzing as much. So most of my guitars tend to have a higher action and uh, a bit more relief in the neck. However, this guitar, as an example, I haven't touched this since it came out of the box, and it does need a little bit of a, I can tell on the high E. Yeah, you know, it's a little bit buzzy, but it's a dream to play. Um, so just, you know, I think this is kind of going to veer me more towards maybe having a slight lower action, maybe a little bit less relief in the neck, which just, you know, you have to be a little bit more on it with your playing because you do have to worry about fretting out and stuff like that, but... I do find this a lot easier to play. sort of gross fast things um, obviously having a lower action and stuff is important so to answer your question Jeff you know I tend to go for slightly higher action because I just like you know my default guitar playing is always going to be stuff like heavy-handed so a higher action and more relief does help with that but at the same time conversely I think this guitar is sort of veering me more into a just chill out a bit kind of a direction if you know what I mean by having a, a slightly lower action and such so once again you know there's benefits to both I'm sure everyone's got their preference um, but I don't get that kind of caught up in guitar setup uh, mentality you know I, I wish I did because I'd probably play better in the long run if my guitars were set up a bit better but I am guilty of not really caring that much so I think that's about it for today I've covered quite a lot of stuff thank you for sticking with me throughout throughout all these videos uh, as always I massively appreciate the support I hope you're continuing to enjoy what I'm doing here um, you know I made it to episode 11 this is great so thanks for all the support thanks for all the questions please keep them coming in because I do find them very useful to provide some themes for videos like I've done today. So if you've got a question, please drop it in the comments below and I'll attempt at least to get it into a future episodes. And I'll be doing more live Q&As as well to address as many of your questions as possible. So thanks for the support. Thank you also for the PayPal donations. If you feel inclined, I've got a PayPal tip jar link in the description below. Thank you to everyone who have contributed so far. I really appreciate that. And that's it for today. I'm going to see you off with some uh, some more screaming fuzz factory. <laughs>